Okay, guys, let's uh, let's get rocking and rolling here. Everybody can see my screen. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so uh, welcome back, everybody, to day three of our uh, revenue challenge. Um, super excited to have you guys here. Hopefully, I can deliver some more value to you. Um, adding on to the last two days um, of our of our uh, revenue generating challenge. Um, just to kind of get into this and get started, um, today we're going to be focusing on de designing a lead generation plan. Okay, so most of us here have one of two problems, um, or both at the same time, is either we need to get leads and opportunity into our pipeline, all right, or you know we're not uh, closing enough sales, all right. So in, in somewhere in that in that um, in those categories, we have to resolve some things. So today is going to be focusing on really developing a strong lead generation plan. Okay, so if you can recall, uh, yesterday we focused in on creating an offer, all right, having an offer that actually, you know, resonates with your ideal client, um, with your ideal prospect, and being able to position it. So now, now that we have our offer, um, we're going to be focusing on a couple of uh, other areas. So I'm going to share with everybody in the chat here, um, our workbook for generating leads. So Typically, um, when we're generating a lead plan, um, you know, there's a, literally a thousand different options for what you um, what you can uh, what you can possibly do. Um, what I've done for you guys is I've narrowed it down to only proven strategies that I've actually used. Okay, so in the uh, in the chat, you'll see a workbook for 101 proven strategies. Um, oh, I guess I got to make that for everybody. One second. And where we start off with is uh, basically focusing in on free strategies first, all the way down to paid strategies. Okay, so I want to explain a couple things um, just so we have some clarity on on your lead generating uh, strategy. Um, most of us already have opportunities that we haven't actually utilized. So before you go out and create new opportunities, I'm going to strongly encourage you guys to consider all of the potential um, people that you already have in your pipeline. Okay. So I always like to go after the lowest hanging fruit first, before I'm going to buy a lead, before I'm going to, um, start prospecting or anything like that. I'm going to actually make sure that the leads that I have in my pipeline, I've done my best to convert those first. Okay. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys some follow-up strategies. We're going to try and keep it really simple. These are going to be actionable things that we can take action on today to start to generate more revenue. Um, and I will, I will safely say um, that 90% of the contractors I work with do have a completely ineffective follow-up strategy. So meaning that the leads that they're bringing in, they're not consistently closing enough and they're giving up way, way, way too soon. Okay. So to give you context to this, um, I get the privilege of looking over hundreds of contractors, sales processes and help build, you know, help build them out from scratch and have been, you know, doing this for 23 years. Um, what we've seen, especially, you know, through COVID is that the number of follow-ups, all right, is roughly about nine to 13. Okay. On average. Okay. So for the guys out there that follow up once or twice, completely ineffective. All right. The reality is people are busy. People, you know, it's not their top priority. Maybe they got a quote from you. It's, it's been forgotten about, especially add in, you know, recession and concerns about spending money. If you're not able to consistently follow up with your leads, that is where you're, you know, you're basically flushing money down the drain. Right. That's where we're, we're blowing a lot of our opportunities. So I have a couple of SOPs that I want to share with you, as well as the actual process that we're going to go through step by step when you should follow up, what days you should follow up um, and, you know, doing it on a consistent basis. Now, uh, just full disclosure here, obviously, the system for following up and um, the uh, the automations and stuff uh, that I'll be describing throughout here. Um, that is, you know, what we offer. We we fully automate sales processes, help you to, you know, be more focused on making face-to-face -face sales. Um, but again, if you are just starting out um, and, you know, we're trying to generate revenue right out the gate, I've given you the actual steps that you can do manually as well. Okay. 
Um, over time, you're definitely going to want to automate those. You want to speed those things up. We have tons of things that's a part of our special offer here if we want to take this whole thing and just um, have us build it. Um, but hopefully you uh, can get some big, uh, big wins in here just by following the steps. Okay, so pretty simple what we have to do. Um, we're going to uh, take the offer that we had developed yesterday. We're going to launch that offer. Again, I've given you 101 different strategies to, to use it, to position it. Um, step two to this is going to be to follow up consistently, and we're going to go through that today. And step three is going to be to track our progress. Okay, um, pretty simple. As a contractor, we have three things that we have to do. We have to get work. We have to do work. We got to keep score. All right. When we break it down like that, it's pretty, it's pretty easy. Um, I wish it were easier as easy said as done, but ultimately we don't want to overcomplicate what it does, what it means to grow a business. Okay. So um, we're going to choose where we're going to launch our, our new offer that we had developed yesterday. Um, we can do it. Facebook emails, ads, um, or in your network. OK, if you're just starting out, you don't have a lot of budget, you're not looking to spend a lot of money on um, buying leads or um, running Facebook campaigns or if you don't have the experience, um, my recommendation is to go to a community Facebook group. All right. One that is local to your town or your place. All right. Very simply look up, um, you know, people looking for services. Um, oftentimes they'll be put posted in those community groups. There's probably 20 or 30,000 of your ideal prospects that are sitting right there. Be a good community member. Okay. So meaning don't just go in there and try and solicit work. You're going to offer advice. You're going to offer, um, you know, to present yourself as a, as a trusted advisor. Okay. Answer a few questions in those community groups. And what you're going to find is that uh, next thing you know, people will start to recommend you. All right. And then there's people that are directly looking for your services every single day. All right. If you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, okay. Make some posts there that are, are offering value and you will see a huge, um, you know, a huge way to get started right there. Um, if I were to do it all over again and I wasn't, um, you know, to start right from scratch, that's probably the, the avenue I would take. It has the best return on your investment in terms of your time versus what you're going to get in return. And again, with a good offer in place, um, you're going to do very, very well in those, those type of settings. Okay. Another uh, low hanging fruit is your contact list, email list, LinkedIn, you know, lists. If you're doing B2B, um, again, start networking, start getting yourself out there. Um, I've given you all those strategies. Again, like I said, in that, in the workbook, um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. We're not going to get too, too deep into the marketing strategy because we could make this a hundred calls if, if I wanted to, um, really want to make sure that we're taking, um, imperfect actions as much and as often as possible. And that includes deciding where are we going to launch this offer? All right. If you have an email list, if you're going to go back to existing customers, all right, we shared with you some offers that you can do to develop more referrals. We've shared with you how to incentivize your referrals. Okay. Now here's the key. Here's the secret sauce. Anything you're going to offer, you must have follow-up to it. All right. Emails, we had to have a follow-up sequence to it. We've got to have a way of following up on new leads. Okay. If you guys learned to actually um, convert your leads more uh, efficiently, you're going to find that you don't actually require many leads um, on a monthly basis. So when we really look at our numbers and understand most contractors trying to do, you know, zero to 250 grand need less than seven leads a month. Okay. They need to close three jobs a month. When we break it down like that, it's pretty simple. All right. The end, an average lead. If I'm, if we're trying to go fast, an average Facebook lead, an average, um, Google lead. And I mean, again, don't, don't hold me right to this, but they run about a hundred bucks. Okay. So we're looking at $700 if we want to pay for it. All right. Um, I don't recommend Angie's list or anything like that. That's not a, that's uh, not a good choice for you. Um, but again, if you're, if you're willing to do a little bit more manual work, LinkedIn, um, you know, places like that, where we can generate conversations, uh, community groups, you don't need any fancy advertising, no websites, no nothing. Um, and you're able to generate, you know, opportunities for yourself. The next step to that. And again, I would put this before websites and anything else. Um, if you're just starting out would be again, get your follow-up process in place. Okay. 
most of the money and and you know you can you can take this to the bank um the money's in the follow up all right the closing of the deal so if you didn't close it on site or you didn't close it the first round um, we've got to make sure that we have a consistent way to follow up with them. And if you're doing anything above 250000 or planning to do anything above 250000 I promise you, um, you're going to want to automate this process. You're going to want to have somebody put it in place. We're here to help. Um, we want to see you get those things in place because the reality, which I shared yesterday, is 70% of your time um, in sales, if you're doing it manually, is spent doing non-sales activity. All right? Meaning... We're following up with customers. We're sending out texts. We're sending out emails. All of that stuff is something you want to get off your plate. And for the value that you're going to receive back, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, get somebody to automate it. Um, we're happy to help you with that. Okay. So bare minimum, we want to plan for at least three touch points with every single lead. Okay. Um, I actually recommend quite a bit more. Um, and I want to share that with you guys in terms of understanding your your basics of follow-up. So let's just take our process here. All right. And for anybody uh, that is looking for our 100K, um, you know, if you have any sort of leads in your pipeline already, this, this, uh, this tool is very helpful for actually uh, going through your entire sales process. So when a new lead comes in, what information are we intaking? Okay. How is that being collected? Okay. Um, this, this to us is a CRM. It's actually what we offer. We create these CRMs so that leads are automatically added into um, a lead intake. Okay. From that point, you can have an AI actually try to qualify your customer. Um, you can have uh, yourself reaching out and qualifying that customer. Um, again, these are all processes and procedures that you want to have. That'll be, you know, fairly specific to your business. All right. So again, like you said, we or like I said, we can have a manual and a non-manual um, process here. Um, and ultimately, what we're doing is trying to schedule them to an appointment. Okay. We want to get in front of them as as often as as we can. Um, if you're running colder leads, okay, uh, cold leads being um, Facebook or anything where somebody doesn't necessarily know, like, or trust you yet. All right. What you're going to find is that. Um, and you've got to have a, a procedure for actually getting them qualified, getting the appointment scheduled. Okay. Big difference between running leads that are um, referrals. All right. So they're already warmed up and, and open uh, to speaking with you versus somebody that may be passive or in research mode. Okay. You're going to see this. This is where a lot of the work has become. Gone are the days, unfortunately, where people, um, you know, reach out to you or, or inbound, you know, call you without, you know, having a, a really robust Google ads campaign or something along those lines, other than your referrals, right? So if you're generating leads, Facebook, depending on where they are in the buying process, all right, plan to have a few steps going in, a few contact points. People don't get back to you right away. I'm sure you've experienced being ghosted before. Um, don't give up, all right? This is the big thing. Just because someone didn't respond to you immediately, does not mean they're not interested, okay? Part of what our CRM does um, and allows you to do is to see what emails they're opening, you know, what uh, what texts they're, they're seeing, all right? And maybe it's just they're still researching and maybe we've got to add something to our sales process that gets them to, you know, book appointments more consistently, all right? But here's my recommended uh, timeline that we want to follow and we're going to follow up for 30 days minimum before they become a nurturing sequence, okay? Um, a nurturing sequence is basically, again, if you can think of it as like a newsletter, gives out information, warms up your prospect. Um, maybe they reached out to you uh, during the research phase, um, decided to put the project off. If you give up on that lead, you are losing a fortune. I mean, this is where the money's, again, like I said, is made. Um, so again, understand that your prospects may again, ghost you or seem like they're ghosting you, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't convert that into a scheduled appointment now or 30 days down the road or 90 or 120 days, all right? Especially if you have a good system in place that's gonna do that automatically for you, okay? For my guys out there doing it manually, here's how, what we do. We call it the three box method, all right? We're gonna call, email, text, call, email, text, all right? Day one, day three, day five, day nine, day 14, day 21, day 30, okay? 
So you can very quickly see how these activities doing manual will add up very quickly and could take a lot of your time. All right. So again, if you're just starting out, do this yourself manually. Don't have a lot of leads to follow up on. That's cool. All right. But if you're looking to grow and you're looking to expand your business, this is what we're seeing across the board through all of our accounts. Um, again, especially if, if you're trying to grow um, your business aggressively. Okay. So next we want to, and again, I'm just using a, um, a boiler plate here, but uh, this is for a roofing contractor. Basically um, we're going to determine after our, um, after our initial intake, which buckets are going down. If it's a retail repair insurance or retail replacement. Um, and then we have obviously procedures for how to perform the inspection, what we do on site. Okay. That is a part of your sales process. Okay. I can't stress this enough to you guys. A lot of sales are lost, um, just by making silly mistakes in terms of how you address the customer, how you make them feel. All right. It leads to a lot of whether you're closing that deal or not. Um, so I often, um, get the, um, immediate response that I've got a, you know, excellent closing ratio. I close like 90% of my jobs and I'm, I shake my head. Yes. And, and quietly disagree with them in, in terms of that being effective. If you are closing 90% of your jobs, you are too cheap. You should not be closing 90% of your jobs. If you are closing 10% of your jobs, you have a sales problem. Okay. Meaning that you need to learn how to sell properly to uh, human beings um, although automation is cool. All right. It gets you in front of the customer faster, speed the lead, which we talked about on the first day. All right. Absolutely critical. But if you don't have a sales process for moving that person through the sales process and successfully getting them to close. All right. It doesn't matter about any of these things. It doesn't matter how great you're marketing. It doesn't matter about any of it. All right. We have to get better at actually closing customers. Now, the good news here is most contractors suck at sales and they don't even know it. All right. So again, these are part of the problems that we fix, helping you to have an actual sales process in place, one that you're confident in, um, not being salesy in front of your clients and seeing your closing ratios for high ticket sales go up to 40 or 50 percent, where that's a that's a really good number if you're charging a premium price. OK, so big difference. Anybody can give things away. It's a big, big change when you're charging a premium price, meaning you're you're in the 30 or 20 to 30 percent margin club on every job. All right. That's where we need to be decent. We don't have to be fully professional, but we need to be decent at closing. OK, um, and that involves having a process. So next, um, again, now that we've given the estimate out, if we haven't closed on the first call um, and this is B to B, B to C, it doesn't matter. All right. This is our follow up schedule. OK, so again, you can see three box method, um, call, email, text, call, email, text. Um, and we're not giving up on them for the first 30 days. Uh, again, you may think that this is aggressive. It's not. Um, it's not that aggressive nowadays. And ultimately, again, if you have a, a problem um, that you can solve for your customer, um, it would be a shame for you to quit or give up early and have somebody else um, come and take the job. Uh, just because you you failed to follow up, okay? As I've said, especially just put yourself in their shoes. Um, they've had three contractors, four contractors, five, who knows, show up. Um, they've been through three or four sales presentations. How much of that information do you think they've retained? Not very much. Do they think they even remember who you are specifically? No. So again, and especially if you didn't do a great job in the sales process and you didn't have a really great proposal, you didn't have anything that really stood out, um, you're going to get, you're going to get beat out just by the follow-up, right? So somebody that's just following up more consistently will probably win the job because there's really nothing to, you know, to uh, change the, the client's mind. Okay. Follow-up is a great way to reinforce your offer. Okay. So we're going to use this communication opportunity to reinforce key points that we're making during our sales process. All right. We want to use information to get them to know, like, and trust us. All right. And I will, I will stress this to everybody here. Kind of um, that's listening in. Um, we are definitely in a post-trust era. I would say we're in a post-trust recession. All right. Nobody trusts anybody. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys have picked up on that much, but there is zero trust in the market um, between contractors, especially if you come in and you've pitched them. 
All right. You've made a hard sales pitch at old school, just, you know, car salesman like um, you. I can guarantee you that nobody likes to be sold. Nobody. All right. Um, and if that's what you're doing, all right, there's a good chance that you're losing a lot of sales there. On top of that, if we're not if we're not really actually building value and trust with our customer, all right, the chances of you closing high ticket or consistently are pretty much next to nil. Okay. And we see this day in and day out, small adjustments here, um, learning how to have an offer that you can stand behind that gives value to the customer, which we talked about yesterday, but also following up on those key points. All right. And getting the customers to actually sell themselves. All right. Um, again, asking, you know, good questions that bring out the, the real core problem that the customer is experiencing. Um, these are really, really important to your follow-up. Okay. So, once again, I'm going to share this in the um, in the chat with you. It goes through the whole system, the process. Um, again, um, I'm going to give you you know some some other templates as well. Um, so really, nobody here will have an excuse, and we're going to take action today. All right, imperfect action. Even I don't care if you don't have a CRM. I don't care if you don't don't wait for these things. Okay, if you have opportunity in your pipeline right now, you have a responsibility to yourself and to your business. All right, to convert that into revenue, all right? I'm gonna give you all the tools that you need to and I want you to take action today, okay? We don't need to wait for something to happen or we don't need to wait to get a new fancy toy or anything else. If you can't do this at the very basic level, all right, you have no business trying to speed it up with AI or automation or anything like that. Again, we face these challenges day in and day out. Um, I wanna make sure that I'm being clear with everybody here until you've, you know, until you've actually done the process, seen the benefits and understand how it works, it's not advisable that you go and speed it up because that's what AI and automations do is they take your sales process and they make it faster. Okay. They, you know, again, give you speed to lead, but if you don't know what you're saying or you don't know what you're trying to reinforce and you're not, you're not clear about your message and what you're trying to get that customer to do, all it's going to do is make you look silly. Okay. And I don't recommend it. Um, so again, work with a professional if you need to and developing these things, I'm giving you templates. Um, I want you to personalize them. I want you to make them your own again. Um, you know, take a little bit of time, make a little bit of effort on, you know, making sure that those messages will resonate with your client, that they match right. back to your offer. Again, what's the point in sending anything if it's not, you know, clearly getting the customer to make the next step. Okay. Um, I'm gonna just stop here for a quick second. Anybody have any questions in regards to what I'm what I'm showing here in terms of the sales process? Uh, maybe me. Uh, so I got some cold leads mm -hmm. that have been in my. So I did like the whole thing. They one, two, three, five, thirty yep. plus some extra phone calls. Nothing. You yep. mentioned at some point you just keep going, keep going. But oh, I never. So here's the rule. I never stop until they tell me to stop. They have given me permission to contact them and I'm going to contact them as many times until it's until they tell me to stop. All right. There again, I take the, I take the outcome off the table. I don't get offended by someone not responding to me. I know that that's human nature. I have looked at thousands and thousands of these situations and I know how consumer behavior is. Okay. Um, so what I recommend is this is an intense process, you know, over the 30 days. All right. What we do is we lean that back. So it's called a, uh, you would run re-engagement email sequences. Um, also you would run a nurturing sequence. Okay. So maybe it wasn't the right time now. Um, also yeah. a place to introduce your referral offer. Okay. Great time after that 30 days. Hey, you know, maybe we didn't do business with you. All right. But here's what we're offering this incentive to recommend us to someone else. All right. Great place to position that. And, and, uh, and I think I've shared with you too, Nick, that like, 40% of our leads that we generate come from people we never did business with. Yeah, right? just from referrals. So you, That's would right. put them, so you would do the 30 days and then put them in the nurture. And That's then right. Keep... And then the nurture sequence pulls all those other elements out, right? So again, we're making a referral offer. We're making additional offers. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had the work done by someone else. The other big thing too is, again, getting... We, we have it, you you have it as well, is like we keep following up to get their feedback. So we're trying to get them to say that we didn't get the job. The quicker we can say, hey, we lost the job, then we can kind of take them off the board. 
All right. And it, yeah. they'll fill out a customer survey. All right. Uh, again, it, you're still friends. You still have a, a, a viable opportunity, just not good for this job or this round. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just, I had nobody filled the survey yet. Like, yeah. so I got those that didn't reply, those that didn't say no, I, yep. put, I put them in the nurture. So I would do the 30 days, put them yep. in the and nurture. Then, and then mm -hmm. there's going to be another sequence for the nurture. Like every two months, we send like an offer or just like. Right. A, and your new it, campaigns, you got it. Okay. And who, who and when does, is there already like something built in for that nurture sequence? Um, there's, again, you would have to, we'd have to take a look at it. I don't know exactly how far we went with it, but generally we always put a three month nurture sequence. And then from there, what you do is you use your social media posts. All right. Because you're building new offers. So new campaigns, for example, we, I recommend you run one new campaign um, or promotion every 90 days. Right. We talked about okay. that yesterday in terms of positioning. You run that back to the list. If they haven't opted out and you can see that they're still opening emails, they're still texting, like, or they're they're still reading the text and everything else, then you go for as long as 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 they'll accept them, right? It's only when they they opt out that it's over. Yeah, and when they when they hit stop, it's gone. That's right. But up to then, again, what do you have to lose? So that's yeah. the mentality we want to take into it. Again, if anything, you're branding your business to a prospect that you paid for a lead for or you generated a lead on. OK, and like I said, uh, you know, take it from me. We've been using these systems for for over a decade. We know how they convert. We've had people on our list that we didn't sell stuff to for, you know, 10 years plus, but they've referred us nine, 10 times. How does that work? How is that like, it's just the way that you, you look at your opportunities, right? So maybe we didn't do business with them. We were too expensive. That's okay. All right. Do they have family members? Do they have friends? Do they, are they going to remember us? Is, are they open to another offer um, down the road? Absolutely. Right. As long as your sales process was, was done well. All right. You made a good connection with them. You gave them a quote, you offered their service. Again, here's good, you know, good rapport there. There's no reason why they would be offended by it, right? Mm -hmm. And that you should stop is what it, really where I'm getting at. Yeah, okay, okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions in terms of what we're covering here? Any other, you know, situations you want some advice on? Okay. So we'll uh, we'll kind of move on. Um Here's another place I really want to make sure that uh, that we're emphasizing on is that our sales process doesn't just stop when we get the sale or we get the okay, right? Can't can't stress this enough to you, all right? There's a whole sales to production handoff. Um, again, this is part of the problems that we see uh, regularly and we we aim to rectify um, is if we just stop at we got the okay, all right? I know what happens. Then we have a bottleneck of the sales to production handoff. This is where 90% of our problems occur. All right. 90% of the problems in the field occur from the sales to production handoff and the communication in between those two places. Okay. Um, also, again, most of the inefficiency occurs from the sales to production handoff. Um, and again, guys work really, really hard on developing their sales processes and getting them, you know, dialed in so that they can, they can have consistency in closing. All right. And then they completely neglect the whole delivery and production side of it or the communication side of it. Um, so once again, I've given you some opportunity here to think about those things, like what happens after we win the job? You know, what are the steps? How do we get that into a production manager's hands or how do we delineate between sales to production? Okay, we want to have a very clear process. So this is a good opportunity to use the tool here to really map yours out. Okay, make sure that you have clarity on all of the you know elements that go into running a job, because I promise you, if you fix your sales process and you fix your sales thing, it's going to bring a lot more work than you were expecting. And now we have a whole new problem. Right. So again, I'd love to say that it's a, it's a, it's a, a silver bullet or a magic pill, but I've yet to find one. I don't offer them. If you know where I can get one, Hey, you know, let me know. But the reality is um, when we fix one thing, it's going to lead to problems, other areas. Again, um, this is a part of what we do here at the contractor AI is help you straighten out all of these areas as you grow and scale. Um, if you're interested in that, we're going to drop some links in, um, in the chat box for the offer. But 
um, as well as the tools that you can you can work on these things on your own. Um, but we want to be very, very clear. So again, these are part of our sales playbooks that we go through and making sure, I mean, even your collections, like what's the process, what's the steps, right? A lot of these things can be automated. It can be built into an, a complete system, um, that allows you to, you know, get through jobs quicker. Right. And we talked about speed and how important it is. Um, you know, I'll emphasize by saying money loves speed, Right. Anybody wants to debate me on that, we can we can certainly debate on it. But ultimately, the guys that are doing it the best right now and the top one to two percent have figured this out. All right. Speed the lead. Seventy eight percent of customers choose to go with the contractor that responds first. All right. You want to win the game? Get faster. All right. Deliver better. Speak better. Have a better offer. OK, that's going to solve a lot of the revenue uh, issues that you have. All right. If you want to really take it to the next level, I mean, ultimately, after that, we have to apply the same principles to how we actually um, perform our work, how we recruit and hire. Um, all of these things play into um, systems. Right. So, again, having systems in place that allow you to do these things um, more efficiently, that is the advantage. Right. That allows you to use generally average people and get, you know, very extraordinary results. Okay. So um, in the chat as well, and actually in the uh, in the um, school group, um, you'll see that we have a new profile open. Uh, what I'll be sharing with you guys is a basic follow up procedure um, that I want you guys to um, use. So give me one second. There we go. And I'm going to give you, because I know that um, some of this may be already standardized for some of you guys on the call and um, others, maybe you're just starting out. So I wanted to make sure I give you two plays today. One's a little bit more advanced and one is very simple. Okay, so we're going to look at, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. A very simple standard follow-up process. Okay, so like I said, no fancy gadgets, no nothing like that. We don't need to, you know, build a CRM if we're not ready for that yet. Okay. All I want you to do is follow our three box method. All right. Our text message can be simple. I've given you the templates for it. All right. So there you go. Um, very basic, very simple. Again, I'm going to give you no excuses today for not taking action. Anybody that is in your sales pipeline, whether they've gotten a quote or not, all right. Whether they've, um, you know, maybe you've given a quote out. I don't care if it's been 30 days since you've had a last touch point, start following up and being consistent with it. Okay. No magic to this stuff. It's not a mystery. Companies are doing it at scale day in and day out. Um, this is really what separates the, the, the contractors that are consistently busy and, um, you know, working on bigger problems from the guys that are barely getting by and don't have enough leads or opportunity, right? This is the, this is the revenue generator, um, you know, par portion of it. Okay. Um, not to take away from yesterday's conversation, of course, offer, of course, marketing, all of these things are important. All right. But again, the conversion is the most important. If you can convert your opportunities, even if you don't have many, all right, by having a good, strong message, by having a consistent, clear follow-up that isn't highly salesy, um, that offers value, all right, you will be successful no matter what marketing channels you use, okay? Um, so I just wanted to make sure I was clear about that. Um, so in here, again, if you guys follow along, I would like you to personalize these messages. I've even gone as far as, you know, putting in where in brackets if you wanted to send it out as is, all right? So again, no excuses here for not uh, not being able to follow through. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this tool? No? Okay. I'm going to throw that in the chat for you guys today. Look at that. I'm even making it easy. You don't even have to go to school. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about something a little bit more advanced. Um, and I use this strategy often. I have sales teams. I have sales reps. Okay. And what we do and what we found um, more often than not, especially for our style of sale um, and our ticket price is that by bringing in a sales manager sooner into the conversation after a, um, a client has met with a rep, all right, gives us even more range and opportunity to, to sell. Okay. 
So I wanted to uh, quickly discuss that as a option for you guys. All right. And again, can be fully automated into the process. All right. We get a tremendous amount of recovered jobs from it. And the reason why is quite simple. It's been used since, you know, I'm, I'm sure since the beginning of sales in one form or another. Um, but people will often not feel as comfortable with the sales rep as they will perhaps with the owner of the company. Okay. So if you are sending someone else out that represents you, all right, it's always not a bad idea. And we know it from the conversions, all right, that we um, have a place where we're going to, you know, intervene or reach out to the customer again as a second party to that uh, decision making. Okay. Um, again, it's just about really making sure that we're focusing in on that conversion um, and being, you know, being upfront and formal with the customers. So we have a, uh, a sales manager follow up uh, model that we're going to, after a sales rep has had a presentation, um, and you can use it in other forms too. It can be the office manager. It can be whoever. All right. And we're basically going to reach out and, um, you know, try to get that um, conversation rolling again. We're going to try to get them basically to tell us what the the issue is that's stopping them from actually moving forward, dealing with the objections. All right. Um, again, this is where we can get into some discounting if necessary or negotiating, I will call it. All right. Um, but if you're not giving yourself that second layer of opportunity, um, again, you're going to leave a lot of projects on the table, right? So maybe you didn't make a great impression as a sales rep out there. They were unclear. Um, do really did it differentiate yourself? That happens. Okay. Or maybe they needed to, you know, they needed to think about it. That usually means that we had a problem in our sales process. If you're getting those objections, um, a great place to kind of implement is your is your sales manager. That's that second neutral party that's going to reach out and try and pull that objection out of them. Okay. If we know what the real objection is that they're having, if it's price, if it's you know again uncertainty, um, if it's time, we want to really get that out of them and they will often more than likely open up to a manager versus the actual rep. All right. It's just human nature. I don't know. Can't really um, give you any better explanation for it, but I've given you some touch points here. Um, and again, you can, you can, it doesn't necessarily have to be a sales manager. It can be, you know, somebody else within the company. All right. And that's just going to give you an extra opportunity here to, to um, convert. Okay. Out of curiosity, has anybody used a strategy like this before in their uh, in their sales process? No. Okay, Johnny, have you ever used a sales manager like intervene with a with a sale? Uh, no, I haven't. <clears throat> Never had a sales manager. Um, okay. We we've kind of done a little informal of this text messaging, but mm -hmm. not to the not the number of touches that we need to to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and again, like, here's the, here's the harsh reality behind it. Like it's not getting better. All right. So society has become acceptable of ghosting. Um, and that's becoming, you know, a very obvious thing. People in general, um, especially if they're bringing leads in off the internet and, and various other places that they're not obligated to you. Okay. Um, and they're not afraid to wait, burn your time either. So, I mean, we have to be very creative in how we're getting people to move from that cold, you know, cold to warm to a referral customer. Um, and I think we're all, you know, kind of seeing that, especially this year, as the demand has dropped in the market, people have become more cautious about spending money. This is where people that are companies that have got a very good sales and marketing process in place are succeeding. All right. They're growing in a recession. We're growing through recession. Um, you know, we've had one of our most profitable years this year. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, you know, we've also recognized that it's a lot harder, right? It's taking a lot more times to follow up. We're converting jobs now that we priced, you know, back in February and January. All right. Had we given up though, all right, they would be gone. Somebody else would be doing them. All right. And it, all it takes is just having consistency in that follow-up, having consistency in your messaging, making sure you're thinking about the client journey, all right? Now, I'm not talking here about spamming people, and I want to be really, really clear about that, right? There's, you know, within the CRMs that we use, we don't we don't spam people. We, like, if somebody's showing no interest or no engagement with our content, we stop sharing it, right? That, to us, again, at a certain point, tells us that that, that contact is dead, Right. If they haven't opened a text, an email or anything like that, we can see that. 
Okay. If they've been unresponsive, we're not just going to keep, you know, uh, slamming them because that's not good for the health of um, our emails and, and everything else that goes into this. We're only continuing to communicate with people that are opening our, our emails that are, you know, responding to our texts. Okay. So again, just, just so I'm being clear, you know, there is a, you know, there are laws against spamming people. Again, these people have all opted in. They've, they've shown interest at one point. All right. Um, they may be at various points in the sales process, but again, understanding this and really kind of removing your, your fear of objection. That's kind of what I, I, I get a lot of from contractors is they feel like this is way too much. And at that point, I have to, as an objection, agree with them. All right. It's too much for them, but it's not too much for their customer. Okay. It's not too much for, you know, their business. And when we remove ourselves from that, um, that perception, things really start to change with our business. Okay. And you will be surprised with the feedback you do get. Yes. You're going to get some that are annoyed by it. Okay. At least they responded though. Right. I mean, again, if I paid $50 and someone, you know, to generate a lead and, you know, all I got back was, um, you know, a customer saying that I was annoying, I'd be okay with that. I'm absolutely fine with that. At least I have the answer, right? At least I know which direction to push that person. All right. Now, if I have somebody that's come in um, and, and I have this situation almost, you know, almost daily, to be honest with you, again, you know, we've been communicating with someone for three months. We may have 30 or 40 messages that have gone out that they've maybe answered and they've got a score. You know, we know they're sitting in the, in a 40. All right. We know they're still engaged. And then all it takes is just, you know, that day they decide, yeah, you know what? We want to move forward. Right. That's all it is. And if I had given up anywhere in that process, again, how many jobs are we losing? Tons, right? You can't just survive off of brand new leads. Okay. Companies that do that, again, they, they have a lot of problems, you know, downstream and upstream, even if you're using, you know, sales reps, if they have no follow-up to that, no way of nurturing, no way of, you know, getting their message across, all right, they leave themselves vulnerable for ups and downs in the, in the economy, right? This is marketing 101 in terms of, um, you know, making sure, again, that your customer f um, sees the value in your service, that you get the chance to differentiate, um, and that at the end of the day, we can get premium numbers for our service. Okay. Also the real secret here to revenue <laughs> and revenue gains. All right. Is not looking at a lead as a one and done situation. Okay. Not ever looking at any customer as a one and done. If you're not at this point, looking at every customer, no matter which market you're in as a lifetime customer, all right, that you're going to provide wow service to no matter what. Okay. Then you're truly going to start to, you know, fade away. I promise. All right. For consistency, again, it's five times more expensive to generate a new customer, all right, than it is to keep the ones that you have and remarket to the people who've already worked with you, all right? So again, a lot of this system is built on building relationships. It's built on, um, you know, really using good communication to um, have somebody, you know, recognize your brand and and be aware of you, recommend you to friends and family, um, even if they haven't done business with you down the line. Okay. This is where the power of these CRMs and sales processes and, and building these things out really kind of, uh, you know, dominate and where we're going to see a lot more of these things coming online where we're going to have to compete with that. So I want anybody that's still doing things manually, and I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. I'm not saying you have to change. All right. The choice is yours. Okay. But I want you to think long and hard about this situation. All right. Think about the guy that comes into the market that is doing all of these extra things, but not spending any more time doing it than you are. Is he going to win long term over you? Right? Can you compete with this? If this was fully automated, if all of the if you're coming in and you know a contractor is fully organized, and you're not, is that is, is that going to allow you to grow and scale? No. All right. Do you think any of this is going away? Do you think any of this is a fad or a phase? No. The reality is it's here to stay and it's only going to get more and more powerful. As we get into the AI, now I tend to try and, and keep AI to a minimum in these conversations. I want to be really clear, although our name is Contractor AI, um, my belief, and, and I will remain firm on this, is that AI is a tool. All right. It's something that helps us to generate um, sales. It helps us to get appointments booked. It helps to fill in gaps and save time. 
but it is not a replacement for a human being. All right. We are still in the human people to people business. Okay. For as long as I can, and as far as I can see so far, um, nothing has persuaded my, my opinion. Um, we still have to be good communicators and we still have to um, know how to actually move our customers and build relationships. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. All right. So anybody have any other questions in regards to what I'm sharing here? Any other, any of the resources that I can um, better help you guys with and get you pointed in the right direction? I'd like to spend the last few minutes here just kind of going through, um, you know, what the next steps are. Nope, we're good. Okay, awesome. All right, so... Um, Next, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about your exact next steps, and then um, we want to make sure that we're launching our offers today. So, who here believes that they can launch an offer today? I'm not ready yet. What's that? I'm not ready yet. I still You're not ready yet. Financing. No, okay. I still got to work with finance yet. So, no, I'm not ready. You're not ready yet. Okay. No. So. Again, um, assume assume the sale. Like when we launch an offer, and I I wanted to be clear about this because I see this all the time. Um, you have to validate it first, right? So the worst thing to do is go spend a whole bunch of time developing something, all right, putting all your work and energy into it, and then launch it and it gets crickets. How would that feel? Well, that would suck. That would suck, right? Yeah. So you know what I would do proactively ahead of that? And now I'm not I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm I'm going to I'm going to tell you what I would do is I would go to my social media channels, all right? I would ask my audience or whoever I have there if that was something interesting to them, I would use my email contacts and go back and follow up with prospects that have been in our pipeline and make them that offer. Don't, don't try and run it on a fresh new lead source. Go back to people that you've already had a, a, a conversation with or already have given quotes to and make them the offer there, right? You have that email list. You use the system. So, I mean, it just run the email back to them and see what the response is. Oh, wait. So, like, some people who haven't, like, signed, if they, they haven't replied to, like, after I send the quote, say, Hey, if we offer like, you know, like financing at like zero percent for 12 months, like, would you take it? Right. Is that what you mean? Got it. Yeah, absolutely. So again, it opens up a new conversation, right? So well, even a simple text, what's that? I still need to be ready in case they say, yeah, sure, let's go. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, okay, bye. Right. So again, you know, don't get like what I was saying is like, don't put it into like a Facebook ad or anything like that. Like you're going to, you're going to go back and rerun that in your follow-up sequences, Right. You don't want to test new offers on a new audience, okay? Uh, you want to prevent that as much as possible. The other thing you can do is survey your customer, okay? So if you have a customer you've done business with already, call them up, have a conversation with them and say, hey, you know, I just wanted to get your advice. What, what would you have thought if, you know, earlier on I was able to offer finance and would that have helped you to move the job forward faster, okay? Remember, again, you got to use the data that that's being shared with you, the information being shared with you to make these decisions, because we only have a limited amount of time. Right. So, again, when it comes to offers, uh, like it's very important that you take the time to think about them like you guys are and actually, you know, write them out, get them, get some opinions. Um, our community is a great place. Um, sharing your offer. You guys got feedback yesterday. Right. I've shared some feedback with you on it and try to really get them going. But the next step to that is going to be go back to your active list now. All right. Your warm, your warm leads, ones that are middle of the funnel and see if you can convert them with it. Right. That's good. Idea. Sense? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that might get some of those people that weren't responding that had financial problems. Right. So like, you know, and it could be as simple as a text. Hey, you know what? We just started a new program here. Um, wanted mm -hmm. to see if if we could bring you in at a zero dollar zero interest rate. Would you be interested in moving forward? Right? They're either going to say yes or no. Right? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So again, that's how we would launch a finance kind of offer. Um, and again, um, we can chat about it. I built you some SOPs for it as well. So, you know. That's a really, really strong, like, you know, especially right now, it's really, really strong with the market.
Good, good. I'll try it up. Okay. So the next thing I want you guys to do, if you want to take this one step further, is just like I said, show me your follow up. All right. And I will tell you if you make money. Um, again, the money is in the follow up. Um, if you're not converting, you know, on the first call or the first uh, first attempt, especially in B two B, I'm going to say where you have a third party maybe making a decision. You're dealing with a facility manager that has to go through them. Again, be consistent with your follow ups. All right, be be thoughtful of who your decision makers are, um, and be clever. Right, we've got a lot of resources here for you to draw from. There's a million different ways to kind of take position with specific offers, but. If you're just leaving that whole, you know, time or that gap between yes and no empty, that's where you're losing, you know, that's where you're losing a tremendous amount of revenue and opportunity. And even if we did bring you in leads, more leads, you're still going to see mediocre results without a follow-up. Make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to post your follow-up. Um, Nick, if you want to think about those text messages and, and what that would look like. Happy to help you uh, cr or critique those. And in that uh, manager one, I think we we uh, mentioned the finance as well. So let's get those messages dialed in. We'll get them set up and we can measure our results, right? Yeah. All right. That's the fun in this. Uh, Johnny, the same thing. Um, again, if you're, if we're, you know, wanting to go back after facility managers and clients you've done business with, that might get quite a few of your jobs that are kind of sitting in limbo across the line. Um, so that would be, you know, again, a good way to start generating more revenue. Okay. Um, again, just a reminder for everybody uh, in school, I have a whole bunch more um, uh, templates and stuff. If you, you know, put your hand up, anything that you need or you're struggling with, um, anything that's going to allow you to take action today, um, whether it's a small amount of action or a big amount of action, I don't care. I mean, let's just make this our priority. Um, nothing happens without you taking the first step. Okay, so I want everybody to get results from from the time you're spending with me. Um, and I've given you absolutely no no excuse whatsoever um, for not getting them. Um, and then, of course, for everybody that's um, not in our program already and that's maybe listening on the live stream, um, we have a very special limited time offer, of course, um, following the rules from yesterday. Um, and uh, only uh, accessible to people that are running the challenge. We'll share the link in the chat and on the um, on the pages if you want to have a have a look at it. Um, basically, we're offering this whole setup um, as well as uh, you know helping you to get your pricing and um, helping you to get your operations in line um, and following our contractor AI program. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see you guys uh, take advantage of that. Um, we're only running it through this challenge. And we'll uh, get into what we're going over tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be uh, overcoming ob obstacles that can slow down our your lead generation. So um, we're going to really kind of look at how to, um, you know, streamline things, how to, you know, really make sure that your process is getting you the results. And most importantly, how to measure properly, right? How to actually see your numbers um, in your marketing and understand what is 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 working and, um, you know, what what can be improved. All right. Again, everybody, I appreciate you joining and tuning in. Hopefully we've uh, we've delivered some value for you today and uh, looking forward to you guys posting your results shortly on our on our uh, revenue challenge. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.